Number two, the second way, was to not cast one or two lead actors who were popular in the genre, but four. Yeah, as the US customs agent, we have actor Johnny Garko, who was more famous for his roles in spaghetti westerns, especially as the Sartana character in almost all of the official Sartana films. And he was one of those Italian stars who kept making spaghetti westerns on into the early 1970s, even as that fad was losing popularity. But Garko did have some association with the Eurocrime genre, most notably in an early one, The Cop, from 1970, and opposite Henry Silva in The Boss, from 1973. So he was a name, even if he was bigger in another genre. As the small-time black market racketeer, we have Jeff Blinn. Now how best to describe old Jeff Blinn? Well, you know how Franco Nero is considered one of the biggest stars of Italian crime films, and how actor Maurizio Merli is considered a sort of knockoff of Franco Nero? Well, Jeff Blinn might be considered a knockoff of Maurizio Merli. In fact, I once interviewed a Eurocrime actor named Leonard Mann, and he told me he was supposed to star in a film with Maurizio Merli, but that he was put off by Merli's reputation for being difficult. So he asked not to star with Merli. And guess who ended up co-starring with Leonard Mann in that film? Jeff Blinn. So that almost confirms right there that Jeff was meant as a Maurizio Merli substitute. Anyway, that other film, like this one, was set in Naples. And I think most all the Italian crime films Jeff did were set in Naples, as he got into the genre late, and it was just a Naples-based genre by then, by and large. So even if he started as a copy of a copy, Jeff Blinn was a name. And as one of the crime bosses, we have Antonio Sabato. Now, admittedly, Antonio Sabato was not the star that he was a decade plus prior. Yeah, back in the 1960s, Sabato was being tried out as a potential huge worldwide star. He was in the star-studded international cast of the Formula One racing movie Grand Prix. Uh, he shot a big part for Barbarella, even though he barely ended up in the finished film. And MGM got behind one of the spaghetti westerns he starred in, Hate for Hate. During the 1970s, he headlined a bunch of Italian crime films, and while his starring vehicle started reasonably prestigious in that decade, he ended the decade by appearing in some of the cheapest, shoddiest examples of the genre. So what happened? Well, by most accounts, Sabato was just very disagreeable on set, and he burned a lot of professional bridges. I certainly had my personal dealings with Sabato. Yeah, for a few months he basically harassed me by phone, wanting me to film his hidden camera TV show idea. And when I told him the project didn't really make sense to my life, he suggested I buy a used car from him so that then he could afford to pay me to work on his project. That was honestly his solution. He also threatened to, quote, kick my ass. So yeah, I can see how he could be considered difficult. As a side note, here's something pretty interesting. I interviewed Antonio Sabato for my 2012 documentary, Eurocrime, and he was kind of bummed that I was also interviewing actors like Leonard Mann, the actor I told you about that co-starred with Jeff Blinn. Sabato thought that Leonard Mann was too minor a star to be in the same documentary as he. Now, Sabato thought Franco Nero was acceptable to be in the doc with him, but Leonard Mann was too small a name. Now, remember how I told you that the new Godfather's director, Alfonso Brescia, made a bunch of sci-fi films in the late 70s? Actually, he made War of the Robots with Sabato in 1978, and he made Star Odyssey with another new Godfather star, Gianni Garco, in 1979, the same year as this Mafia movie. Anyway, War of the Robots and Star Odyssey sound as if they should be a lot of fun, right? cheap B-movie rip-offs of Star Wars should be some enjoyably campy viewing. Well, they're actually pretty damn dreadful, total slogs to try and sit through. But ironically, Leonard Mann was in a 1979 Star Wars rip-off by another Italian director, and that one actually is kind of fun for that sort of thing, with a passable budget. So Leonard Mann, the guy who was allegedly too much of a nobody 
to share a documentary with the great Antonio Sabato, was actually making better Italian sci-fi ripoffs than Sabato by the end of the 70s. But anyway, Sabato, even if his star had faded a bit, he was definitely still a name. Finally, for our fourth star, we have Mario Marola. Now, Marola was basically the star of these later 70s Eurocrime movies made in Naples. He came from a musical background, both as a recording artist and from the Napolitano musical theater tradition known as Cinegiata, which was a big influence on this period of Eurocrime movies. Yes, yeah, Cinegiata was the source of inspiration for all the melodrama that found its way into this phase of the Eurocrime trend. Mario Merola did make some movies with legendary Eurocrime directors like Stelvio Masi and Umberto Lenzi, but mostly he made these cheaper crime films with Alfonso Prescia, the new Godfather's director, like 10 or more collaborations. Oh, and if you need an explanation of what this word Camorra means, it was the predominant form of organized crime in Naples, just like La Cosa Nostra was for Sicily. And yes, the actual Camorra did sometimes get involved in the making of these little Naples set movies, sometimes even playing on-camera roles. In any case, that is, by my count, four big Eurocrime leads for this film. And the film wasn't done with the way it's trying to be.